We have already learned in this course that sugar plays an important role for the human body. It delivers energy to our brain and acts like fuel to our muscles. Hey Asu, now it's your turn! Finally! I already thought you forgot about me! I know that I am important for all of you, but what you really forgot to tell is that I am sweet! And that the perception of sweetness gives us a lot of pleasure. You're completely right, Asu. Sugar belongs to those compounds which are responsible for sweetness in foods and beverages. Sweetness belongs to the five basic tastes. Its perception takes place in the oral cavity, mainly on our tongue, where we have a large number of receptors for sweet tasting compounds. And most of us very much like the taste of sweet products. Even newborns have a large number of sweetness receptors and they adore the mother's milk because it tastes sweet. On the other hand, you might have heard that excess sugar intake is harmful to our body. Results from several studies show that dietary sugar intake is clearly associated with the metabolic syndrome. High sugar intake does not only influence the blood sugar level and increase the body weight, it also increases the risk for raised blood pressure, HDL cholesterol and blood triglycerides. To get a better understanding on sugars, let's have a closer look on the chemistry of these compounds. If we use the term sugar, this is in fact a little bit superficial. We should be more precise as there are several types of sugars. Instead of the term sugar, we should better use the term carbohydrate. With this term, we cover the whole range of compounds. The collective term saccharides instead of carbohydrates is also frequently used, which is related to the word saccharose, which is German for sucrose. You will see that I have a lot of sisters and brothers. We all look very similar. But there are so many of us, we are only going to introduce you to my very best friends. The term sugar usually covers mono and disaccharides, which are those carbohydrates that taste sweet. Monosaccharides can be regarded as a kind of building blocks for disaccharides and polysaccharides. Here you can see a model for a monosaccharide. In this case, it is glucose. For a disaccharide, Two building blocks are required, and for a polysaccharide, we need three or more monosaccharide units. The probably most important monosaccharides in foods are glucose, fructose, and galactose. As you can see, the chemical structure is pretty similar. The empirical chemical formula is identical for the three of them. Six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. But when you have a closer look at their structures, you can see decent differences. Glucose and galactose form a six-membered ring with differences in the geometric arrangement of the hydroxyl groups, whereas in most cases, fructose forms a five-membered ring. All of them taste sweet, but due to the differences in the chemical structures, the metabolism of the human body is different. Glucose and fructose are natural occurring in a large number of fruits, vegetables or honey, whereas galactose is important for all types of milk products. As the name suggests, disaccharides are built up of two monosaccharide units. The occurrence and their specific properties depend on which types of monosaccharides are attached to each other. Sucrose is probably the most prominent disaccharide. It is composed of one glucose and one fructose unit. In daily life, we use sucrose very frequently. Together with glucose and fructose, naturally occurs in fruits and vegetables. And the sugar cubes that we can see here consist of pure sucrose that was extracted either from sugar cane or from sugar beet. The disaccharide lactose consists of one unit glucose and one unit galactose. Lactose is also known as milk sugar. So you might not be surprised to hear that lactose is the main carbohydrate of milk. The disaccharide maltose is composed of two glucose units. Maltose is a degradation product of starch. As a consequence, we can find it in all starchy products such as bread or pasta, in potatoes or rice, but also in beer as we need barley for beer production. As monosaccharides, disaccharides taste sweet. This is why we make use of them when producing or processing foods. Sugar is important for the texture, provides volume, for example, to cakes and biscuits. Furthermore, sugar is important to maintain moisture, 
for example in bread and other bakery goods, to keep them soft and fresh. When we produce thermally treated products, such as these biscuits here, sugar, together with amino acids from the raw materials, also plays an important role for the formation of the pleasant roasty baking aroma, as well as of the nice brown color of the biscuits. These reactions that are responsible for this behavior are summarized by the name Maillard reaction. When we heat sugar, or highly concentrated sugar solutions without the presence of amino compounds to temperatures of higher than 180 degrees centigrade, caramelization takes place, which also leads to the formation of brown pigments and the typical flavor that we are familiar with from cotton candy, butter caramel or fudge. This means that I get a tan not by lying in the sun, but when I am heated? You're completely right, Asu. But I'm sorry that I have to tell you that your structure is completely destroyed during these reactions. When the human body wants to make use of disaccharides, the dimeric structures have to be broken down. For this cleavage, we need specific enzymes, which are synthesized by our body for this purpose and which act as a kind of biocatalyst for these reactions. The resulting monomers can then be further resorbed and metabolized by the human body. When we consume sucrose or lactose, the disaccharide has first to be broken down into the monosaccharides and then we can resorb glucose. You might know anybody who suffers from lactose intolerance. For any reason, these patients lack the formation of the enzyme lactase, which serves as a biocatalyst for the breakdown of milk sugar. If milk sugar may not be cleaved into glucose and galactose in our digestion system, this may lead to health problems for these patients. The carbohydrate group that we still need to talk about are polysaccharides. As the name indicates, many monosaccharide units are attached to one another and form large molecules. As you can already see from this trisaccharide here, the chains that are built are not straight, but they take a certain structure due to the bond angles between the atoms. There is a large number of different polysaccharides, which are different in the type of monomeric units and the number of monomers in the polymeric structure. Some of them are also branched. These are the reasons for the different shapes and different physical and chemical behavior they show. Let us have a closer look at three examples that are frequently present in types of foods. Starch, glycogen, and cellulose. All of them are built up of glucose units only. Starch is a very important component of foods. In potatoes, rice and all types of grains we can find large amounts of starch. Starch is built up of glucose monomers which are linked together via so-called alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds. There are two forms of starch, amylose which is a straight chain alignment of glucose units and amylopectin. In amylopectin, branched side chains are built, which again are composed by glucose units that are linked together in alpha-glucosidic bonds. We have already heard about glycogen, which serves as a kind of fuel tank in the human muscles and which is available when our body needs extra energy. Glycogen is a polysaccharide that is built up similar as amylopectin. The main difference can be found in the arrangement of the branched side chains. In glycogen, branched side chains can be found at approximately each eighth glucose unit, whereas in amylopectin, we can find the side chains and approximately every 25th glucose monomer. And this gives a different geometric structure. Cellulose is very important for the cell structure of many vegetables, of leaves and other plant material. Cellulose is made up of thousands of glucose subunits. The glucose subunits in cellulose are linked via the so-called beta-1,4 glycosidic bonds. For the digestion of polymeric carbohydrates, the organism needs to have the respective enzyme systems available to cleave the bonds and to release the glucose monomers from the polymeric structure. The human body provides the enzyme alpha-amylose for the breakdown of starch and the glycogen genes. As a consequence, we can metabolize starch and glycogen and use them as nutrients. After the consumption of starchy foods, our blood sugar level is increased, but much slower than after the consumption of glucose or sucrose, 
is our body has to release the glucose monomers from the starch before we can resorb it. On the contrary, the human body does not have the enzyme beta amylose, which we would need to cleave the glucose units from cellulose. As a consequence, we cannot metabolize cellulose. <sighs> you humans are very complicated. But what about cows? They seem to love plant materials such as leaves, grass and hay. If they cannot digest it, why do they eat this stuff? This is a very good comment, Asu. The fact is that the metabolism of a cow and of herbivorous animals in general has beta amylose available. So a cow can also digest cellulose, break it down into smaller units and use plant material as nutrient. But don't worry, Asu. We also need structures such as cellulose for our digestion system. Even though we cannot metabolize many polysaccharides, we urgently need them as part of our nutrition as dietary fiber, as they have positive impact on our digestion system and on the gut microbiome. There is a lot of data in the literature that describe that a diet which is rich in dietary fibers and whole grains may lower the rates of diseases that are associated with a metabolic syndrome. <sighs> this was a lot of information. I need a break. I will take a drink and a biscuit. I learned that they are rich in sugar. They will give me extra energy. This is correct, Azu. But be careful. You should not consume large amount of sugar sweetened drinks. This might increase your risk for the metabolic syndrome. There is scientific evidence that the high consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages is related to a higher risk of suffering from the metabolic syndrome. Why is this the case? On the one hand, sugar-sweetened beverages have a high content of added sugar and are therefore a source of calories. Their effect on satiety is less pronounced compared to solid foods. The consumption of these products may lead to an increased energy intake and weight gain. Furthermore, the high sugar intake may lead to spikes in serum glucose and insulin levels, which represent a risk factor for type 2 diabetes. On the other hand, we have to consider the high fructose intake. Many sugar-sweetened beverages are not sweetened by the addition of sucrose, but by the so-called high fructose corn syrup. In contrast to glucose, fructose is insulin independent and as a consequence, the blood sugar level is not raised directly after the consumption of fructose-rich foods and drinks. The metabolic degradation is performed in the liver cells. Excess amounts of fructose is not stored in the form of a polysaccharide, but is transformed into triglycerides, which are then stored in the liver cells or any other adipose tissue of the human body. This again may lead to weight gain, increased blood triglyceride levels, and may, in the worst case, cause non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I've already heard about that before. And did you know that in some countries, they collect extra tax on sugar-sweetened beverages? They hope that the higher prices of the drinks will help to reduce the consumption of sweetened beverages. This is correct, Asu. Giving extra taxes on sugar-sweetened beverages has also been recommended by the WHO recently. And this is also the reason why many products are not any longer sweetened with sucrose or fructose, but by artificial sweeteners or other sugar substitute. But this is a different story. Come on, Asu, let's have a glass of water. <laughs> 